back and forth. Well, good morning. Where'd you go? There you go. All right. I have a special person that it wants to welcome you this morning. So I want y'all to give it up for Kate. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Kate Hughes, and we are so glad to have you here with us. Happy Mother's Day to all of you moms. Let's pray. Dear God. Thank you for this beautiful day to celebrate all the moms and to worship you. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. One other thing. What else is today? Um, my birthday. What else is happening today? I'm getting baptized. She's getting baptized. It's a great day to be in the house of the Lord, right? Y'all stand and worship with us. Lift our voices. Sing the holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty. Early in the morning, our song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful. Blessed 
Trinity. He is holy, amen. Let's celebrate that this morning. We serve a holy God. Hey, well, as the children are making their way in, I want to invite you to take a seat so you can all see this uh, wonderful thing that they have prepared for this special Mother's Day. Good morning and happy Mother's Day. We're super excited that you are all here this morning. Um, so we have a treat for you this morning. Um, this was a little surprise that the River Kids um, wanted to give all the mothers here today. Um, and we are going to be singing the goodness of God. And the reason I picked this song was because I believe that God's love for us is like a mother's love. Is that right? And this song... When you hear the lyrics today, I want you to just truly think of God loves of God loves for us and a mother's love for you. So, are you excited to hear them this morning? All righty, so here we go. Are y'all ready? Are you going to sing out? Okay, here we go. Let me put this down. All right. Here we go.
We're going to invite the children. Yes, if you will move down, we're going to get you to sit down for just a few minutes and let y'all stick around with us uh, as we have an opportunity to celebrate uh, baptism. So I thought it would be really good for us to just have a minute to talk about uh, baptism. What you're going to see, what you're going to witness. And truth is, I'm talking to us, the adults, as much as I am the kids, right? Uh, what is baptism? So what do you think that we're celebrating when we celebrate somebody being baptized? Anybody want to tell me? So you're celebrating that Jesus has come into your heart. That's right. So it, it is something that we're doing that we're recognizing. But the big thing I want you to also recognize is that when we get together and we celebrate a baptism and somebody is acknowledging that Jesus has come into their heart, what else are we celebrating? Anybody? What would you just sing about? It could be Mother's Day, but... It, that's not what it was, right? Okay. But I like where you're going with it. Uh, what would you just sing about? The goodness of God. That's right. And you sang not only about the goodness of God, but you also talked about how God is faithful. So, yes, we're celebrating that Kate is professing her faith and being baptized. But we're also, more than anything, we are celebrating the fact that God is a faithful God. And that God is good. And that God is with Kate. Not just today, but how long? Forever, Forever right? Eternally, God is faithful. All right? So I want you all to be able to see that so that when you begin to have questions uh, you want to think about or God begins to move in your heart, you'll have somebody to come and talk to. You can go talk to your parents. You can come talk to me or to Brian. But we have the ability to be able to talk about what does it mean when God moves in our hearts. So we're recognizing that God has moved in Kate's heart, but we're also recognizing that God has been moving, God led her there, and God will keep working in her life forever. All right? So y'all kind of watch over here, and I'm going to move over here. I'm going to ask Kate to come up. And her family, if y'all would like to join me, we're going to help get you in here. We're going to be real careful. You're going to sit right here on this step. All right. Now, I told you that we were going to ask you a couple of questions, and it's questions I want you, the kids, to hear, but then also all of us who are in the room. Um, do you profess Jesus Christ as Lord of your life? Yes. And do you accept the power? And what I said to you is that means that will you allow Jesus to guide you? So there's going to be times where... Your parents tell you to do something, and you have to do that. Or there's times where you have to be nice to your sisters. Uh, and so God guides you in that, and you accept that power, and you want to live into that. All right? So do you accept the power that Jesus offers you? Yes. To you, the congregation, you may be here for the very first time, Mother's Day, but you are her church. And so you have a part in this as well. And so I ask you, will you nurture her? Uh, will you um, teach her? Will you pray for her? Will you guide her? Will you allow her to lead you? Uh, will you learn from her as she learns in faith? Will you do everything you can to support and nurture her as she becomes the woman God created her to be? Did you hear that? We all got your back. All right. So I'm going to invite you to put your... Do you want to cover your nose here? Let me have your other hand. And I'm just going to lean you back, okay? I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Almighty God, Lord, we just, we just give you praise for working in this young lady's life. And Lord, we just pray for your spirit as she steps out of this baptismal to to feel you and to know that you are with her she's been so excited for this day not because it's her birthday not because it's mother's day but because she was going to be able to claim you and know that you have claimed her as a daughter and so lord we just pray that you guide her steps help us as a church to nurture her in faith and lord we just can't wait to watch what you do in her and her life help her to be the woman that you have created her from the very beginning of time to be it's in the powerful name of Jesus Christ we pray. 
Amen. Amen. Somebody should be clapping. You want to get her right? What a powerful morning already it's been. I want to invite you to stand this morning as we continue to worship. And we just declare that we serve a great God this morning. Um, we, let's just thank Him in this moment as we sing and as we worship for all that He's done already. And, you know, how can we not declare how great is our God after we see what just happened right over there? That's, we do serve a great God. Amen. Let's, let's praise Him in this place today.
serve an awesome, great God, don't we? Yes, to continue in the spirit of worship, will you bow your heads and pray with me? Dear God, thank you for this time that we can just pause and worship you. We can lavish our love on you. We can pour out because you are so worthy. You're the name above all names. Thank you for this beautiful Sunday morning that we honor our mothers. Thank you for the word that's coming forth. I pray that you would touch our hearts and open our hearts and minds to receive that. And we pray all this in the mighty, great, blessed name of Jesus. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. Please stay standing for the reading of the word this morning. Good morning, everybody. Today's scripture is going to come from Joshua 3, 1 through 8. Then Joshua rose early in the morning, and they set out for Shittim. And they came to the Jordan, he and all the people of Israel, and lodged there before they passed over. At the end of three days, the officers went through the camp and commanded the people, As soon as you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of your God being carried by the Levitical priest, then you shall set out from your place and follow it. Yet there shall be a distance between you and it, about 2,000 cubits in length. Do not come near it in order that you may know the way you shall go, for you have not passed this way before. Then Joshua said to the people, Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And Joshua said to the priest, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass on before the people. So they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all of Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. And as for you, command the priests who bear the Ark of the Covenant, when you come to the brink of the waters of the Jordan, you shall stand still in the Jordan. The word of God for the people of God. I invite you all to have a seat uh, in just a moment. Uh, I want us to pray. Uh, we, we're here for Mother's Day. Uh, many of you uh, brought your mothers. Many of you are mothers. Um, here's the reality is this day is difficult for some people. Um, for some of you, your mothers are not here. Um, You may have lost them this year. Uh, Maybe you lost them 15 years ago, but it's never uh, distant from you. Um, For a long period of time, Claire and I struggled to have kids. And I know there's probably people in the room who don't want to be here on Mother's Day because you may not have children of your own. Um, There's just so many emotions that are tied to a day like this. And so I think it's really powerful for us first just to acknowledge that. And so second is as we have a prayer, I want to pray for the women of the church. And so I'm going to invite the men of the church to stand and allow the women to be seated as a position of honor. Stand. And when we're praying, we're praying for all of the women all of the women who are serving in River Kids, all of the girls who will grow into faith and may one day be mothers, may not. We're praying for all of the women in our church and in our lives. And so I just invite you to think about them as you pray and as I pray. Would you pray with me? Almighty God, Lord, we, we come in this moment and we praise you. We praise you for the women who are seated in this room, who have helped to nurture us, nurture our children, our grandchildren. We thank you, Lord, for the women who are not able to be with us, that may have already be with you, and the influence that they had in our lives. Lord, you create us male and female and from women we see such a nurturing heart an ability to to love and care and we know that that is of you and so God I pray for every woman that is in this room 
I pray your Holy Spirit upon them. I pray your blessings upon them. I pray for the families and the people that they influence. Help us to never take them for granted. Help us, Lord, to love them the way that you love them. And so we give you praise for the moms, the moms-to-be, the grandmoms, the ladies in our church that influence us. And it's in the powerful name of Jesus Christ we, your people, pray. And we all say together, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. So as many of you have heard, uh, Pastor Brian uh, was supposed to be here today. His father passed away uh, yesterday. Uh, He shared with me this morning that he hopes to be online, so he may be joining us here. Um, But in the midst of that, we kind of shifted things so that we would... um, Give him the freedom to be son in this moment. And so I just invite you to be in prayer for him and his family uh, as they as they grieve that loss. And as we move forward and no more information, we'll be certainly sharing that uh, with you, the church. So today we're going to shift passages. We're going to move away from the Psalms. We're going to move away from Proverbs. Uh, Hopefully we're not too too far from wisdom. Hopefully there's still some biblical wisdom uh, in the message. But we're going to go back a little bit and listen uh, and look at Joshua. Uh, I thought maybe in the spirit of Mother's Day, I would tell you a little bit about my mother. Um, My mother, I'm blessed that my mother and dad are both still living. Uh, My mother is, um, she is a very kind a uh, very compassionate uh, person. She cares for my dad. My dad's more physically limited than my mother, and so she's kind of caregiver in that role, and I think that tires her and, and, and wears on her a little bit. Uh, my mother also has the ability to compliment you and criticize you at the exact same time. Um, and you're not sure which one it is, by the way. Uh, she is uh, stubborn uh, as all get out. Uh, She's very hard-headed, but probably um, the most, almost every time I talk to my mother, my mother is talking about praying, praying for somebody. I wasn't always in the church. There was a long period of time where I was away from church and kind of uh, in my own space with regards to God. Uh, I believe my mother prayed a lot for me. Um, my siblings, after I came to faith and, and moved into ministry, uh, my siblings, neither one went to church. And I believe my mother prayed for them. Um, I still, to this day, if she'll call me, she'll tell me somebody to be praying for in our family. We have a fairly large family, so there's plenty of people to pray for. So she will share with me who. Now, some of it's gossip, but most of it. Most of it is genuine prayer concerns. Uh, So I thought it would be kind of good for us to just think about prayer. What's the dynamics of prayer that we see? And so I want us to spend a little bit of time talking about that. And you may say, now, why do we want to get everybody together and talk about prayer on Mother's Day? Um, Well, here's the I I know this about people in the church. We struggle with prayer. Uh, We struggle with prayer how to communicate to God and how God communicates to us. In the small group that we meet with on Wednesday nights, that's one of our conversations we have is how do, how do you actually have a relationship with God? How do, you, how do you build this ability to be able to communicate? And it is not my goal as one of your pastors, it's not my right for us to, to help you become nominal Christians. I mean, our goal should be to help you be like fully onboard disciples of Jesus Christ. And yet what statistics tell us is the average person in the church only prays for about a minute a day. And my guess would be that's thank you for the food. Uh, we, we have to learn how to be people of prayer. I mean, it's an important discipline that we need to build upon. Now, Why would that be the case? Because if you look at Jesus' life, Jesus 
Over 60 times between Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, 60 times Jesus shows us this discipline of prayer. Before he made a difficult, big decision, do you know what Jesus did? He withdrew and prayed. Before he even picked his disciples, he withdrew and prayed. Before he did the, the miracle of the multitudes, I mean, where he fed with the fish and loaves, do you know what Jesus did? He withdrew and prayed. Before he called Lazarus out of the grave, do you know what Jesus did? He withdrew and prayed. We have this idea that Jesus is somehow superhuman, but yet what you see Jesus do and what you see Jesus say, Jesus tells us in John, I can do nothing on my own. I can do nothing of my own initiative. John also says it this way, if the son can do nothing by himself, he does only what he sees his father doing. So if we are going to be people who are fully sold out for Jesus Christ as disciples of Jesus, we have to build this discipline. And so I think it's good for us to revisit this story in Joshua that we saw and that Lindsay read for us. Now, the context of the story, Moses has died. The Israelites have wandered around for 40 years, and they are standing on the edge of kind of the precipice of the promised land, and they are getting ready to go in to take Canaan. Now, when I think about that passage, they are literally on the verge of a miracle. Now, why might that be relevant to us? A couple of weeks ago, if you were here, we talked about the idea of forming a long-range plan and trying to, to begin to realize what God is leading us to beyond this space, which is phenomenal space. And we shared with you that somebody has offered the possibility of donating land to us. If we can, we are on the, we are on the edge of a miracle. But I want you to go back to the Israelites, Joshua. Do you think it was going to be easy? Do you think they stood at the Jordan River and thought this is going to be an easy thing? I don't know if they did, but here's what we do know. That for thousands of years, people have been living in Canaan. They built walled cities. They've been farming their land. It was not going to be easy. There was resistance that was coming. They may not have even known it, but maybe they did. And I would say to you as a church that it's not going to be necessarily easy. But we need to learn from their story and think about what did they do. And what I see them doing is praying. Since we told you a couple of weeks ago about the possibility of this long-range plan, just challenge yourself. Have you spent much time praying about that? I hope you have. So let's listen to this story again. In Joshua chapter 3, if you've got your Bibles or you can go into the sermon notes, you can see them there again for you. The scripture says this, Then Joshua rose early in the morning and they set out from Shittim. And they came to the Jordan, he and all the people of Israel, and lodged there before they passed over. At the end of three days, the officers went through the camp and commanded the people, as soon as you see the Ark of the Covenant, I want to stop there for just a minute because one of the questions that came up in our small group around the table is, what is the Ark of the Covenant? It's, it, it's the presence, literally the presence of God. So it contained the presence of God. So they were moving the presence of God. It's how they understood and how God had presented himself at that time. Maybe different than what we have today, but we have to understand that in the context of this passage. So as soon as you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God being carried by the Levitical priest, then you shall set out from your place and follow it. Yet there will be a distance between you and it, about 2,000 cubits in length. Do not come near it, in order that you, may not, that you may know the way you shall go, for you have not passed this way before. Then Joshua said to the people, Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And Joshua said to the priests, take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass on before the people. So they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people. The Lord said to Joshua, today I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that, I, that as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. 
And as for you, command the priest who bear the Ark of the Covenant. When you shall come to the brink of the waters of the Jordan, you shall stand still in the Jordan. Now, one of the things that's not mentioned here, if you go back to Numbers, it tells us that Moses taught the people that when you moved the presence of God, when you moved the Ark of the Covenant, there was a particular prayer that you would pray. Just want you to hear it. Rise up, O Lord. May your enemies be scattered. May your foes flee before you. And what I want you to understand is this whole process of moving the Ark of the Covenant was covered in prayer. Covered in prayer. And so I think we can learn some very valuable lessons from this passage and this text to help us as a church. What do we do? What are those four dynamics that we see in this passage that would help us in our prayer life? The first... Waiting in prayer. It's critical that as we wait, I mean, as we pray, that we are willing to wait. You don't move ahead of God. Now, I don't know about you. That is not easy for me. I won't make you raise your hand yet about whether you struggle. That may come later. But I want you to just think about, are you, is that easy for you to wait my prayer often is, Lord, save me from what I just did. Right? Anybody ever prayed that prayer? That you move ahead of God. So what we see the people of Israel, they sit for literally three days. And what I've learned is waiting is not continuing to tell God what I want him to do. See, I think that of waiting is, okay, I'm just going to keep praying the very same thing. And keep telling God, this is the plan. This is what I need you to do. Waiting is listening. Listening to God. Remember the passage, be still and know that I am God. See, we often think that God is silent, that God is distant, that somehow we don't feel him. But yet the scripture tells us that, that we have our being in him that God has his way in us and so one of the things that we need to learn as the people of God is how to sit and listen to God do you do that well I shared with some of the youth recently um, one of the mission trips that I went on there was a lady that I met Uh, she uh, had a home that we went to work on. And when we got there, she had rain that would just pour into her house. And every time it rained, she had it it was everywhere, in every room. And she had been praying for her sons and daughters to come and fix her roof. Now I want you to hear this. Her sons and daughters lived around her house. But they didn't have the resources to help her. They didn't have the money to help her. And so she prayed every day for somebody to come and fix the roof. And when I asked the youth that were in that meeting, I said, how long do you think that she had been praying that prayer? Anybody want to guess? It was 18 years. Now, I tell you that story because this is what I can, I, I remember it like it was yesterday when I, because I thought, would I wait 18 years for an answer to my prayer? She did. And not only when we fixed her roof, she began to realize that the scripture that she'd been praying said sons and daughters from afar. She'd never recognized that. And she realized that God had answered her very prayer. We need to learn the discipline of waiting. The scripture tells us that when you see the covenant move out, when you see the present, follow it. Notice the position. Notice the position that God is ahead. Next week, we're going to celebrate Pentecost. It's the day that the Holy Spirit is given to the church. Jesus is resurrected. He spends time with the disciples. And then after he ascends, you have 10 days and then the Holy Spirit comes. I want you to hear a part of that story 
in Acts chapter 1, verse 2, it says this. Until the day when he was taken up, after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen, he presented himself alive to them after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard with me. For John baptized the water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. What do you see the disciples do? They wait. They wait. They listen. One of the most important dynamics I believe that we can see in this is the importance of waiting. Listening for God to give us the time. Now, if you jump to verse 5 in Joshua, listen to what it says. Because we don't just only sit and wait. In verse 5 it says this, Then Joshua said to the people, Consecrate yourselves. Now some translations, if you go and read them, if you're a Bible, you may see this. It says, make yourselves holy. And what it believe it means is it means that you are to completely give yourself to God. You are to submit to God's authority. It is important for us to understand that God will not bless or honor disobedience. But God will most definitely honor obedience. You want some really good wisdom? Listen to what it says, Psalm 84, verse 11. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Another translation, just hear it this way. The Lord gives, doesn't withhold good things. To those who walk with integrity. I mean, one of the most mistaken concepts that we have in prayer is that if I pray for anything in Jesus' name, I'm going to get it. Now, I don't know about you. That has not been my life. I have wanted my entire life a Jeep Wrangler. (laughs) I drive a Kia Soul. All right? So God doesn't, just because I pray in Jesus' name, God give me a Jeep Wrangler in Jesus' name. It doesn't work that way. In fact, here's what I would argue to you. And I want you to really challenge yourself. Let this really push you. If I pray in Jesus' name without submitting to the will of God, do I use the Lord's name in vain? That hurts. We have to submit to the will of God. Philippians says this, Therefore God highly honored him and gave him a name above all names, so that at the name of Jesus everyone in heaven, on earth, and under the earth might bow. When I pray in Jesus' name, I submit to the authority of God, whether I like it, or not, whether it's convenient or not, whether it fits my time frame or not. One of the things that we as the people of God have to learn how to do is to be able to pray in Jesus' name with the authority under Jesus Christ before I ever know the answer to the prayer. Before I know that answer, I commit to God. And so that's the second dynamic. The second dynamic, in addition to waiting on prayer, is give yourself to God. Submit to the authority of God. And then the third is expect that the Lord will do amazing things among you. Go back to Joshua 3, verse 5. It doesn't just say consecrate yourselves. That scripture goes on. Let's look at what it says. Then Joshua said to the people, consecrate yourselves. For tomorrow, 
the Lord will do wonders among you. Listen, expectation defines outcome. Think about it. Expectation determines your outcome. I can't speak for you. I can tell you that growing up, there were plenty of times that I got up to come to church and never really thought about what was happening. I came because my parents made me come. There was a point in time where I came because I wanted to go to church, but I didn't really think about what was happening. So just invite yourself this morning to think, when you got up to come to church, when you drove into the parking lot, when you pulled in and you got out of the car, did you expect God to do anything in this place today? Did you expect God to move in your heart? Did you even ask the Holy Spirit to move in your heart? Do you allow the Holy Spirit to move and say, hey, think about this part of your life. Expectation. Listen, God is in the business of transformation. If you saw our Facebook video this past week, there is nobody that was more excited about this Sunday than Kate. Because she was expecting something today. And it had nothing to do with her birthday, although that was cool. It had nothing to do with Mother's Day, although she was trying to do that for you. It had everything to do with the fact that she recognized God had moved in her heart. And she wanted to celebrate with what she calls her river family. Do you have any expectation? That's my prayer. I, I get up, I try to come in early, and that is my prayer every Sunday is to be excited about what God is going to do in your lives and in my life. I mean, go and... Jesus, y'all probably know the story if you've grown up in church. You know that when Jesus went into his hometown, they didn't really, like, receive him well, right? Uh, he wasn't able to perform some of the miracles that he'd been performing everywhere. He wasn't able to do that in his hometown. Why? Because they had no expectation. They saw Jesus as this little punk kid that was running around in Nazareth when he was five years old. They saw him as Joseph's boy. They saw him as a carpenter. They had no expectation. And I love it if you go and read the Gospels. Mark tells you what Jesus' response is. Listen to this in Mark 6.6. 6. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And I read this, and I don't know about you. Let's leave that up for just a second. Because it sounds to me like Jesus was surprised at their unbelief. Like shocked that they would unbelieve. But if you read that in different translations, you get different words. So I just want you to see it in a different translation. He was appalled. By their disbelief. So when I pray. With no expectation. Do you know how Jesus sees me? He's appalled. At my disbelief. Do you ever pray with no expectation? Do you believe God is really in the business of transformation and moving in our hearts? Expectation determines outcome. For tomorrow, the Lord is going to do amazing things. I want to remind you. In Mark 11, it says this. It's a promise. Therefore, I say to you, whatever you pray and ask for, believe that you will receive it. It may be 18 years from now. Believe that you will receive it. And it will be so. When God gives you a vision. God will give provision. Like amen. That God, When God gives you a vision. God will give provision. Now I've probably shared this story before. And if you've heard it. Don't check out. Just listen to it again. Because it, this is real, like in my life and in my family's life, it was one of those moments that forever taught me this. 
And so for the people who are not, have, haven't been here, maybe this is for you, but maybe it's for all of us, again, a reminder. Um, when, I was, when I was planting a church, um, we had no people and no money. Y'all probably heard that story. Uh, I say it all the time. We had no people and no money. So, um, but I had to go and I had to go buy, take out an ad. And if y'all were, remember that, I took out the ad. I was very nervous because I was going to have to spend $134.50. I remember the amount. And I took out that ad and I was scared that I had spent $134.50 of the church's money. I got home that afternoon. I had prayed for that for a couple of days about spending that. And I got home, and in my mailbox was a check. And please don't make this story about money. Remember, if God gives a vision, he'll give a provision. It was a check from somebody who doesn't, didn't, wasn't going to my church. Do you know what that check amount was for? $134.50. Isn't that a weird amount to write for a check? I mean, and so I called the person. I was like, why did you write that amount? And they had gotten some check in the mail that they weren't expecting. And they tithed that amount. They knew we were planting a church. So they just tithed that 10%. And it happened to be, they had to have written that check two days before I made the decision to write the check. They had to mail it. And post office could have taken three days. I don't remember that part. Here's what I knew is God was ahead of me. When God gives a vision, God will give provision. We need to expect when we pray. And I've been mindful of that story since going into ministry because I expect God to move. I believe God will move in somebody's heart this morning because that's what God does. Do you have any expectation when you pray? Our faith in God's answers to our prayers are never dictated by the circumstances we face. But the promise of God. And so let me give you the fourth dynamic. Act on God's directive. In verse 8 of chapter 3 we read this. And as for you, command the priest who bear the ark of the covenant. When you come to the brink of the waters of the Jordan, you shall stand still in the Jordan. If you've got your Bibles, jump down to verse 14. So when the people set out from their tents to pass over the Jordan with the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people, and as soon as those bearing the Ark had come as far as the Jordan, and the feet of the priest bearing the Ark were dipped in the brink of the water, now the Jordan overflows all its banks throughout the time of harvest. The waters coming down from above stood and rose up in a heap very far away at Adam, the city that is beside Zarethan. And those flowing down toward the sea of the Arabah, the sea salt, were completely cut off. And the people passed over opposite Jericho. And what I want you to hear is in verse 15, it tells us the Jordan River is at flood stage during the harvest. It's always that way. Why didn't God ask them to cross when the water was low? Why does he ask us to go through difficult things? Why doesn't he make it easy? Notice the water does not stop until they put their feet in the water. The scripture is very clear. That the water stops at the moment their feet touch the water. How many of us, we hear these stages, these dynamics. How many of us say, well, you know what? I do pretty good waiting. I'm, I, I'm, I'm not bad at trying to be able to submit to the will of God. I even pray with some expectation. But what I really want is I want the water to stop and then I'll move. That's not what we see. It's not the story that we see in Scripture. We, as the people of God, have to continue to risk. That's what we see. We have to be willing to put our feet in the water. We see the rushing waters and what we do is, most of us, we let it create doubt in our minds. And so what we want to do is we want to, we want to wait, but we want God to calm the waters. We want God to slow them down so that we can take a step. I would tell you that 
when we pray that way, it's just like we're waiting for low tide. God asks us as the people of God to act on his directive. Do and go where he tells us to go. Listen, I believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ is the answer to our problem. Do y'all? I mean, I believe that Jesus has the power to overcome any obstacle that we face. I believe that Jesus has the ability to, to, to take away the darkness that we might be experiencing in this moment. If I didn't believe that, I mean, I, I think about what Brian and his family, maybe some of you. I believe God has the ability to be able to comfort them in a time where they're experiencing extreme pain. I believe that all within me. And I can pray and I can pray and I can pray. But sometimes God is saying to his people, step in the water. Put your feet in. Maybe call somebody and check on them. Maybe it's go and visit them. Maybe it's go and see them at the hospital. Maybe whatever it is, God wants us to sometimes, as people of faith, put our feet in the water. So I want to ask you this morning, which one of those do you struggle with? Do you struggle with waiting? Do you struggle with submitting to the will of God? Do you struggle with praying with a level of expectation? Do you struggle with sitting back and waiting for God to make it easy? And then you'll go in a heartbeat. Now, I don't mind asking difficult questions. How many of you struggle with waiting? Raise your hand. All right, how many of us struggle with submitting to the will of God? We pray, but we don't do that first. How many of you struggle with praying with expectation? Like, I, I expect God to work and move. How many of you struggle with uh, acting on God's directive? You kind of want to sit back and, and try to have the billboard laid out for you before you actually move with no risk, right? Okay, how many of you all four? Uh, that was just fun for me. Uh, but, but here's, I, I want you, to, I mean, I believe the Holy Spirit moves. And so I want, I want you to allow the Holy Spirit to direct you this morning. I mean, which one is it that you struggle with? And begin to make that a part of what you pray about. Okay, God, I don't like to wait. My suspicion would be is you're going to have to wait. Uh, if I struggle with expect, it's, it's challenging yourself to think, I actually do believe that God can overcome this. And now I begin to look for it. Whatever your particular struggle is, identify it. Allow the Holy Spirit to move in your heart. And then begin to be different. We as a church have to build this discipline and then act on it. Amen? Let's pray. Almighty God, Lord, I am so thankful that you move in the hearts of your people. We literally got to see you do that and recognize and celebrate that with Kate. But I do not believe your spirit limits it to just Kate. I believe you have the ability to move in all of our hearts. And there's some of us in this room that we, we got up this morning. We got in the car. We got here. We sat down. And we, ha we, we haven't thought about you. And I'm not trying to make anybody feel guilty. I'm trying to allow your Holy Spirit to move in our hearts and say, if that was me. Because there's times where I probably do that. If that's me. Convict me. Show me. Help me, Lord, to be able to recognize your spirit working in my life. And any distractions, anything that comes in the way, let me recognize it for what it is.
None of us know what tomorrow is going to bring. But I am convinced that you are ahead of us. And that you are guiding us. So help us. Lead us as a church. Help us to be excited about transformation, not just within ourselves, but with everyone. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, I want to tell you if, you, if you truly make that your prayer, you truly believe that God is in the business of transformation, um, this is a little bit of guilt. I, I, we have these cards on the tables out there. They're still there. So that means we're not picking them up. We're not inviting people. We're not handing these cards to people and saying, hey, come to church. If I really believe God is the answer, we should have to replace these cards every couple of weeks. So I just invite you to, to leave today. Maybe take a card or two. Look for the Holy Spirit to move. And believe that the Holy Spirit will move in you. Amen? A couple other things. Wednesday night dinner. We still have our Wednesday night dinner. That's the last one for this session. And so if you're planning to be here, there's QR codes everywhere around. I try to make those uh, accessible to you. Uh, we need to know that you're coming. Uh, the second thing is we have a new believers class. So if you are one who uh, has recently professed your faith or you have questions about what it means to be a believer, uh, we want you to uh, sign up and register for that class. It's going to be a really good special time for us as a church. And we want to invite you uh, to take a part in that as well. Uh, and then before we leave, a great day is I want to invite uh, the Burgesses and Pam Smith to come forward. They are going to unite with us as a church. And so I'm going to ask them to come up. I want to tell y'all a quick little story. Uh, y'all come on up and turn around so they can see y'all's pretty faces. All right. Um, so the very first people that I, I came to the picnic, and one of the, the first people I met were these three right here. And I thought they had been long-standing friends forever. They'd known each other, but y'all had really just kind of met here and began to form a friendship. Uh, and so they wanted to unite on, on the very same day. And so it's just kind of full circle that I get to be able to, to give you the vows of the church uh, and ask you to commit as well. And so uh, I just ask you simply, do you commit to this community of faith with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service and your witness and if so, please say I do. Now we're supposed to you're supposed to make sure your fingers aren't crossed alright, so uh, now to you the congregation, just like we did with Kate you have a role in this covenant, it's not just between them and God do you commit to support them? Do you commit to pray for them? Do you commit to study scripture with them? Do you commit to letting them lead you uh, in opportunities that they have? And if so, will you please let them hear your voice as you say, we do. We do. Hope y'all heard that. Amen. Let's pray. Almighty God, Lord, we are so thankful that just like you move in the hearts of children, you move in us as adults. And I know it's been hard for them to find their way into this community of faith. But you were faithful to them. You were ahead of them. You were creating something so that they would have a place to unite and join. And so, Lord, we just give you praise on this day. It's been a beautiful day for us to be able to watch you move. And I pray, Lord, that you guide their steps, strengthen them, and may it all be done so that we give you glory and we give you praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As you leave today, for all of the women in the church, no matter age, whatever you are, we have a gift for you at the door. I'm going to invite them to stick around. Somebody come and say hello to them. And I invite all of us to go and be the people of prayer that God is calling us to be. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all God's people say, Amen. Y'all have a great week. Thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all stick up here. Stick around up here.